Airports are full of people who have worked in the airline industry for 20 years or who have saved a million mileage points in their plans. But most of these people have no idea about the risk of exposure to toxic oil fumes on board. This short video takes you inside that issue to explain why everyone who flies needs to make a small contribution to a blood test that will matter greatly to you if you breathe oil fumes during your next flight. Every day in the U.S. alone, there is an official report of oil fumes contaminating the air you breathe during regular commercial flights. Oh, you don't think you can breathe oil fumes during a regular commercial flight? Keep watching. Early in the onset of the symptoms of our flight, um, it was difficult to detect the amount of deterioration in our level of performance. But as the flight progressed and toward the very end of it, just prior to landing, uh, it was becoming obvious that, that our performance was in fact very impaired. On aircraft, the air that comes through the vents into the cabin and flight deck is compressed in the engines first, and it isn't filtered before you breathe it. So if an oil seal in an engine leaks, for example, you will notice what is often described as a dirty socks or a musty smell, whether you're in the cabin or flying the plane. I did not ever see any smoke or haze in the cabin, just the dirty sock smell. After about six hours of flight time, I began to experience the same symptoms without ever smelling any odors. Because there are so many flights every day, statistically, the likelihood of you being on a fumes flight is pretty low. These oil fumes contain neurotoxic chemicals, so statistics are no comfort to the crews and passengers who breathe these fumes and get sick developing problems with their memory, with their speech, with the way they function. On the ground, the mechanics were burning off oil that had accumulated in the engine. It's called a pack burnout with the crew and passengers on board. We first saw a haze coming through the air vents and it was shortly after that we started having breathing difficulties. Once we arrived at the gate, there were 12 ambulance and fire trucks around our airplane and the crew was taken off on stretchers and passengers were seen by paramedics. I felt as if I didn't have any control over what was happening, that we were being told by the company and the mechanics that this was perfectly okay and that it had been, uh, that was a routine. Crews and passengers need a blood test that will allow them to confirm exposure to oil fumes in flight. Because without proof, they don't get appropriate medical care, and there's no pressure on the industry to clean up the air. When we were evaluated in the emergency room, the diagnosis was chemical poisoning. And that was based primarily, I believe, on the high levels of car carboxyhemoglobin in our blood, which were significantly elevated, even after three hours of supplemental oxygen. If you breathed oil fumes during your flight today, how would you prove it? Would the airline doctor listen and support you or pressure you to return to work sick? Would your doctor tell you that you're over 50 now, so you should expect some memory problems? After my exposure, my whole life was turned upside down. I lost a husband of 23 years who no longer recognized me as his wife. My children said that it was as, as if their mother had died. They didn't know the person who I was because I had totally changed. A blood test for oil fumes isn't out of reach. A University of Washington research team has already started to develop it, but they need more funds to finish the work. Right now, we can keep this research moving to once and for all get a blood test that will let crews and passengers prove it if they breathe oil fumes on board. I had no idea that five and a half years ago on a normal flight that that was going to be the last time I would work in the aviation industry. It has been 
financially devastating. Uh, I've lost the, what should have been the best seven years of my career. This opportunity will be lost or delayed if people who fly don't collectively step up and make a small contribution to make this research happen. Not tomorrow, today. Every bit helps and every donation goes directly to the research team. Go ahead, click on the link. Have you done it yet? I'll wait. How about now? Ask five friends, post it on Facebook. I can no longer serve as an airman uh, on any aircraft in any capacity. Please join us by making a tax-deductible donation to make this research happen. And thank you.